Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. This video is a continuation on global sea level rise, the implications to people, how quickly it can happen, and how it will affect uh, global temperatures um, and economies, etc. All of humanity, basically. Okay, so um, in the last video, I was talking about how saltwater intrusion would harm coastal plant and animal life. We could try to control flooding um, at large coastal cities, but this is chasing a, a moving target. As the sea level is rising, what would we build for? Would we build for a one meter rise, a two meter rise, a five meter rise? Is that even possible? Of course, the cost goes up um, exponentially as you have to protect for higher and higher sea level. Um, retreat from the coast is ultimately the only option with rapidly accelerating sea level rise. So global flood damage for large coastal cities could cost one trillion a year. It says if cities don't take steps to adapt, well, if they don't move, basically, if they stop building and, you know, stop building anything new along the coastline and start building on higher ground. Um, this is a simulation on Google Earth of a Tokyo neighborhood with a 1.3 meter sea level rise. And I will, I'm, I will argue that this type of sea level rise can easily happen by 2050 or even earlier. The average global losses in 20, 2005 from flooding were about 6 billion. Um, they're expected to rise to 52 billion, but again, these are based on sea level rises that are much lower that, than will actually happen. So coastal populations and property values eventually will drop significantly when people realize um, that the rates of sea level rise are increasing, etc. Also, you can have land, sinking land. If you're near a river delta, all of that sediment gets, buried, gets um, carried by the river out, deposited on the land, and it causes the land to sink down. And this is happening off New Orleans, of course. So it's too late to stop some sea level rise, but not to, just too late to save lives from it, it says. Well, this is, uh, this is showing um, an iceberg coming off Greenland's J J Jacob Shavin Glacier, Jacob Shavin, I massacred the name. Um, of course, if the entire Greenland ice sheet melted, there's uh, six meters of sea level rise um, globally in that, that's 20 feet. So parts of the parts of so Greenland and Antarctic are the risk as far as um, so the melt rates from Greenland and Antarctica are very important for determining how fast the sea level will rise. Um, and uh, so this study is, is very useful in talking about some of the risks. Now I've this video I put together April 15, 2015. So I just asked the question, just Google this in YouTube if you haven't watched this. Can global sea level rise seven meters by 2070? And I talked about the two millimeter rise over the last century, this rate increasing to 3.4 millimeters per year. Um, so if you basically look at a doubling period of melt from Greenland and Antarctica and just take that into the future over a number of doubling periods, it is very, very possible that we could get this type of sea level rise by 2070. So I go and argue that in this video um, from almost three years ago. And then I did a follow up to this video here um, in July 20th, on July 20th, 2015. So about a, a year and a bit later than that initial video. So. I've also talked about Hansen's papers that talk about superstorms and sea level rise. Um, 
and uh, this vid this series of videos is an update on on the latest on all of that. So again, watch watch these videos to see. I mean, this I've been saying this type of thing for for years now, and the world needs to really wake up and listen. So this plot is showing how quickly what is the Earth capable of doing in terms of sea level rise. This is uh, the peak of the last ice age, about 21,000 years ago. Sea levels were about 120 to 130 meters lower than they are today because the ice caps on Greenland grew, on Antarctica grew. We had ice caps, the Laurentian ice cap covering North America down to St. Louis. And we had the, the, uh, Euro the, the Asian European ice caps and they basically held a lot of water was stored in those so global sea level rise dropped up to that you know with being you know 130 meters which is about 400 feet or so so then we had we left the ice age and we left the the coldest periods and we started warming and we had these periods where sea level rose at different rates so this meltwater pulse here this represented a rise in sea level of roughly five centimeters per year for up to you know five or six decades. So we're talking about two and a half meter, three meter rise of sea level in the space of say 50 years or so. So the earth is quite capable of producing this rate of sea level rise. And this is what we've had here to present day and now we're starting to um, go upwards again. So this is um, from 1900 to almost present day, and the rate of rise is 0.6 millimeters a year in the 1900 to 1930, rising to 1.4 millimeters per year, 30 to 92, stepping up to, um, up to uh, between these two numbers, 2.6 and 3.3, and now we're 3.41 millimeters per year. So you can see the rate rising um, the the so sea level is rising and the rate that it's rising is increasing so it's rising at ever faster rates this is showing uh, the 1992 to 2012 trend and I'm showing this in particular to show you this dip here and this dip is because there was evaporation from the oceans but a lot of that water extra water fell on the land we got lots of rainfall in North America in northern Asia, in northern South America, and tremendous amounts in Australia, which flooded, there were lakes appearing in Australia. So that water stayed on the land for a few years and eventually drained back into the ocean. So that's why this dip is there. That's why you get some fluctuations depending on um, weather patterns and so on. This is a NASA site, um, Earth data. If you just Google sea level .nasa gov this is an excellent site with all kinds of info on sea level so gray satellites which are very useful for measuring the amount of ice on Greenland and Antarctica um, there's some new gray satellites that are to be launched soon global sea mean sea level 3.4 plus or minus 0.4 millimeters per year lots of good stuff on understanding sea level rise the causes etc um, you can look at data and you can actually use a data analysis tool, uh, which I will show you here. So you can actually launch this tool and you can get all kinds of plots and things on time series, how sea level rise is changing over time, how ocean temperatures are changing, all kinds of stuff on sea level rise. So I highly recommend that you play around with, with that information. Okay, now, I'm going to talk about this paper in terms of sea level rise. So this paper came out um, in 2016. This was an online paper by James Hansen, lots of other people, on ice melt, sea level rise, and superstorms. So I'm going to be focusing on the sea level, on the sea level part. So let's have a look at some of the figures. So first of all, um, in terms of uh, Greenland ice mass. Uh, loss and Antarctic ice mass loss. So what this is from um, this is Grace is the gravity 
gravity anomaly satellite. Um, so we only have data from early 2000s to present day. And so, so we have the red curve and then we have data from previous uh, methods and the blue curve. Um, and you can fit these curves, it, the doubling period is about 19 years for, the, um, for this curve here. And for the green one, it's 8.8 .8 years. So the green one is, you know, this is, I'm not sure what is going on here exactly. I mean, it looks like this is, this is the same dip that occurred with the, um, with all, like a slow, like a, this, this was the same dip that occurred, uh, similar time period to the um, sea level rise dip. Um, but what you can see is, um, you know, if you follow this rate, it's much steeper. Um, so I'm not really, like I say, I have to look into this in more detail. You don't see this in Antarctica. So we have the 10 year doubling is the, this curve here and the five year doubling is this curve and Grace is showing more like a five year doubling um, for Antarctica. I think the combination of Greenland and Antarctica right now is about seven year doubling period. Of course, we're losing sea ice rapidly in the Arctic. We're losing snow cover. The Arctic's becoming a lot darker place. It's becoming a lot warmer. Um, in fact, the sea ice is not forming properly this year. We've never seen anything quite like it in, in the history of all, all our measurements and what we can see in the past um, from the paleo records. And as a result, the Greenland melt rates will accelerate greatly as the area gets warmer and warmer and we lose sea ice um, cover over the Arctic Ocean for the entire, uh, for a month in the summer at first, extending to three months, to five months, to year round, within perhaps a decade. And uh, we probably have this first blue ocean event very, very soon, probably before 2020. This, uh, you know, the melt in 2017 in the summer will be one to watch because the ice is not forming properly, it's super thin. And that's, uh, that would be in another series of videos, and I've also talked about it a lot in the past. So this is showing, so this is now modeling of basically freshwater melt flux from Greenland and Antarctica for a five-year doubling period, a 10-year doubling, and a 20-year doubling. What this means is if you measure the melt rate of Greenland with grace, and then you measure it, five years later and it's doubled, it would follow the green curve. If it takes 10 years, it would be the red and the 20, the blue. What we're seeing from the data over the last, say, 20 years, three doubling periods of about seven years is we're between these two curves. So this is clearly showing the flux of, uh, this is in sphere drop, which is 10 to the six cubic meters per second or a million cubic meters per second of water. If you take all the water from rivers around the world, it's about a sphere drop. Now, this is how the sea level would rise with these doubling periods. So we could easily reach a meter here by, you know, about 2045 or so. Um, with this doubling period, it would be more like 2070. But between them here, um, it looks like we would, you know, the curve is, if the curve is halfway here, then, um, you know, for a seven year doubling period, then we're, we're in between these. Um, so, you know, 1.5 meters by 2050 is certainly um, in, the, in the cards if the melt rates of Greenland and Antarctica continue with the doubling period that I've just talked about. So we, can, we're, we would get, we're gonna, we're talking massive sea level rise, massive impacts on humanity. Now, one thing that people forget is, okay, this water, all of this extra sea level rise would be this water is derived from the ice. So we're not going to continue to, this will have a moderating effect on the global temperature rise. So if we talked about the, if we just look at the um, temp, the, this is the annual mean surface air temperature change. This is with a 0.6 meter sea level rise um, by 2065. And what you see is this is a scenario here um, without the ice belt effects, 2.24 degrees Celsius rise in temperature. And this is with ice melt in the North Atlantic, in the Southern Ocean, and in both hemispheres. So I'm going to have to continue an analysis of this chart in the next video. 